This is obviously where the dresser was. There's sparks in our room. Yeah, yeah, he's welding like right down here. What's up, fellow journeyers? Welcome to season 25 of Less Junk, More Journey. Y'all have been asking for seasons, so mm -hmm. we heard you and we are completing it and starting our 25th season. So season 25 is gonna be unlike any season we've ever done. We'll have the full reveal coming up next episode, but this video, if you watch, we are definitely gonna give a sneak preview into what is next for us for season 25. But first, before we show glimpses of that, we have got phase three of the repair on the front deck of our fifth wheel. Phase one, if you remember, Stuart noticed the gap in the trim on the front deck portion of our fifth wheel. So this trim piece, I'll show you the other side to show you what it should look like. And the trim piece was supposed to look like this, but Stuart noticed it come down over a half an inch, which is not normal. Phase two <laughs> was a month or two later in Florida, we noticed that things had moved again. Phase three, which is where we're at now, another couple of months after that, Lippert is coming here to our home base in Tennessee to do an on-site weld repair on the frame. The repair is not only gonna involve coming up from underneath like we did in phase one and phase two, but it's also gonna involve taking things apart <laughs> in the master bedroom and going from top to bottom. You ready? <laughs> she knows what's coming. So Lippert's out there welding and repairing on the outside. So this is what's going on on the inside. <laughs> this is obviously where the dresser was. There's sparks in our room. Yeah, yeah, he's welding like right down here. <laughs> Not the first time we've had sparks in our room. <laughs> Uh, I guess my question is, is this fixable and is everything gonna be put back and better than ever? First of all, <laughs> at this point, the RV is basically, it's basically total. It's not total. <laughs> it's not total. The, the rig's fine. We caught this early, did not do any permanent damage um, other than what he's currently welding in our bedroom. <laughs> and then um, it's gonna go all back together and we'll be good, so. <laughs> It's, it's really hard to be serious while there's like sparks flying up in your bedroom. <laughs> if you're watching this and you're like us, like, and this seems a little bit complex and a little bit involved, it's because it is. <laughs> because if you buy your RV at a dealer, the dealer didn't make that RV, right? It, it came from the manufacturer. But just because it came from the manufacturer doesn't mean the manufacturer made everything inside the RV. And ultimately, like you're, you're going between these different entities trying to figure out, okay, does, is this the part? Is this the manufacturer? Is this something the dealer did? In this case, thankfully, we have Grand Design working with Lippert together to figure out, let's just fix it. Let's make it right for the customer. You know, some of the takeaways so far with this that we have, uh, number one, pay attention to these little things, right? Even the trim being out of place, especially if it's something in that first year where it's a warranty thing, document it, turn it in. Don't just say, oh, well, it's just leaking a little bit. No, there is no leaking a little bit with an RV. Secondly, if you find out there is an issue with the RV, like don't wait, like turn it into the dealer, talk to the manufacturer. You need to figure out, is this just a, a caulk issue or is this something where like something caused this to have this gap? Which is kind of the third thing. We are fans of companies that go to bat for you. They're a bridge for you between what may or may not be them or maybe someone else. Uh, they help work out as a bridge between those two, and that's a big deal. I don't know about you, but I, sometimes I don't even understand <laughs> who made what or what's going on. At their core, they care about the customer, and they're going to do what they can to make it right. And then fourth is like, uh, or maybe this should have been first, <laughs> but, but don't freak out. RVs is like an earthquake going down the road. Every single RV we've had has had issues with things falling apart and things breaking and things, they're just shaking. And so if you have a grand design or, or a grand design solitude or anything like that, just, just watch for these signs. And if you don't see the signs, you're good. Like this is not a common widespread known problem. So Lippert has finished their part of the repair. Stuart wanted to replace the insulation with foam insulation. So until we get the foam insulation, uh, the front is temporarily taped up with blue tape and then the insulation's going in and then we are completely done and ready to roll. So much room for activities under here. 
Did you know we had a Jeep? <laughs> so we do, we live in our fifth wheel. We're parked at Marissa's mom's property with full hookups here at what we call our home base. So we have room for friends to come in. We have a place for the kids to play, but we also own a 2011 Jeep Wrangler. For those of you who've been following us for a while, no, this is not two wheel drive. It's not automatic. I am not making that mistake again. Is the Jeep gonna survive? We're gonna get it, get this done. Oh man. It's undergoing an overhaul. <laughs> Stuart looks mad already. So a little back history. When Nathan and I were dating, I wanted a Jeep and he told me, when we get married, I'll get you a Jeep. So I always joke and say that a Jeep Wrangler was in our like premarital agreement. And Nathan even come up with this like silly printout contract. This was our contract I've held on to. See, no signatures, first of all. <laughs> I'm hanging on to this for future. Yeah, no, I think that's, gonna, that's in the uh, gonna, throwaway pile. Almost this exact Jeep, honestly, and said, I promise one day, <laughs> You have a Jeep. It's so silly, but we still laugh and joke about that now. We got some detailing to do here, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, it's our storage unit as well. I feel like when we're taking off on a route, we're like, just throw it in the back of the Jeep. So Stuart is installing a base plate onto the Jeep. Uh, but did you know, and this is gonna be almost a did you know episode, did you know that even though it's a Kurt base plate, it's actually owned by Lippert. So for years, Lippert's been kind of behind the scenes manufacturing things that are inside of your RV. I know a lot of RVs, like maybe like 80% of the components are actually made by Lippert. But in the last year or two, they've started to supply products to aftermarket or consumers like myself, uh, which is what we have currently. They own Kurt. And so this is a Kurt base plate. We got Kurt tow bars are gonna work with this Jeep as well. And then Lippert as well, they make the chassis or the frame underneath most all RVs that are made at this point. So big thank you to Lippert who gave us the tow arms and the base plate, which are just a portion of what it cost to get the Jeep ready to be towed for down because we'll go through all the totals later. This stuff can really add up. So thank you Lippert for helping out with season 25. When we come back to Tennessee, we have to play catch up. The home base and coming back to Tennessee is chaos for that month that we're here. We're doing all our projects. So just this past week, we've done all the kids yearly visits. We've been to the dentist. I've had my checkup appointments. It's like crazy the month we come back and play catch up. So having a second vehicle we have found is almost essential for us to get all of those things done and go in a hundred different directions to play catch up. Typically we keep our Jeep parked in Tennessee, but this time it's not staying. It's going with us. I keep hearing this noise next to me. Like, you <laughs> check this out, it's pretty cool. Care if I show your washer dryer? So in Stewart's RV, they put their washer dryer unit in their outdoor kitchen out here. That's pretty awesome. And it just drains into the sink. So obviously, you know, the washer dryer oh, comes wow. down to here, you know, oh. which just ties into the same plumbing for the sink itself. Yeah, a total of two adapters here, and then, you know, just a male to connect these in. And so he said their whole floor it's something called hyperdeck. It's like a styrofoam. So even if this leaks, well, the whole floor, other than like, you know, the slide's not that material, but, but if this leaks or something goes wrong, just goes onto the floor, it doesn't ruin the floor. Has this been weird towing or anything like that, Stuart? It hadn't affected it or how's that been? We pretty much swapped the washer dryer weight for the couch that used to be in the back of this. Which okay. So pretty close. Cool. 20 pounds. Okay. I know. Just, the toe's perfect. Does it, 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 so being on this side doesn't affect at all because the couch, where was the couch? On the, the other couch side? The couch was on the other side, but no, it hasn't affected them at all. Oh, we got the 2200, yeah, this is 7200 XD. So this is a ventless version of the one we have. We have a vented version. Both versions just plug straight into a 110, you're good. The biggest reason we went with that because we didn't have the depth to do a vent. Oh, so okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So you had to go with a ventless to fit this space. But a fun fact, ventless is better for your clothes apparently because it doesn't over dry them. Is this still the same size or do you have to cut this and redo this a little bit? When we first did it, we actually had the washer dryer sitting on top of this counter because this oh, wow. counter went all the way oh, across. Oh, well, okay. Okay. Um, and we had it actually sitting up top, but my wife is five feet tall, so. And like, even like here's perfect because this is just super tall. So she could never reach up top. Okay. So we decided to redo this stuff anyway because we wanted our black zone instead of the other cooktop. And I wanted to be able to pull this out oh. and not have to flip the top. I almost, on my open range, I was debating that. So yeah. it, it did fit. 
Yeah, so, so you I was, had to, you had to re, re, recut this, Yeah, I so guess? this whole new face is all brand new. Oh, I made, I made it all. Face, but, okay. like, this pulls out. Yeah, my drift trace stays on and everything. So it's like I, wow. I don't have to touch this it. Is, you just keep that top on it the way it is. You don't have to flip it every time. Yeah, it's, it's like, like I, I mean, they're always dirty. I mean, or... Oh, know, iron strips grease, grease all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. So it's nice that the drip trace stays on there, everything, and... I mean, we've traveled the trays never falling off the back. So if you're like us, I know we looked at models like this. We're like, oh, didn't have the washer dryer. We're not going to do it. So this is, this opens up a lot of possibilities. If you could take an outdoor kitchen on a fifth wheel or a travel trailer, modify it with a ventless washer dryer combo. <laughs> and if you're worried about weight back there, Stuart says it gets zero sway or zero issues. Because he has a hizzle hitch on the front. It's, a, it's expensive, I know. But I'm telling you, everybody that owns one loves it. The trailer just does what it's told and hey if you're wanting this and you can't do this see if you can find you a steward close to where you're at hire it out because this could end up being twenty thousand dollars cheaper than buying an rv model you didn't really want because it didn't have the washer dryer in the layout there's a reason you see people go with dollies instead of towing four down that's what we're doing we're setting this up to tow it four down because you've got a lot of money into the parts you can diy it but it's actually tricky <laughs> it takes a while some of the things we're installing that we need on this we've got the base plate installed we've got this is actually so we went with the nsa ready brake i like it because there's it's affordable 500 bucks which for a braking system is actually pretty good a lot of them are like two grand but this one how long did it take you on the brake Stuart? i know you're still getting the uh the release the, the brakes will probably be a total of an hour and a half ish Okay. Probably. So for mortals like me, probably double that. So you got the base plate here. These can go in here, and then your tow bar is gonna hook up to this. You need the base plate installed. You need this cable. It's gonna go across to what's next. And then it also attaches internally and physically to the brake pedal. But that's not the only thing on the brake pedal. That's what Stuart's feeding through. We have a second wire that's going to the brake pedal. That's for the breakaway system, which from what I understand in 48 out of 50 states, it's required by law. It's basically a system that says, hey, if something goes wrong, if the Jeep becomes attached, the breakaway system kicks in and pulls that brake. So both by the same company, they're both wire-based. So like that, that's simple. You don't have to have like a compressor. You don't have to like, there's someone where you can like manually, it's called like a brake buddy or something like that. But you take it and you sit it in here. Then when you're not using it, you gotta stick it in the back. There's nothing sitting in the way here. It's all physically just a wire. And then the heart and soul of the system is this inertia based system. So when the unit is towing the Jeep and it has to hit the brakes and stop or slow down, then this moves, it pulls this wire Hopefully they miss anything up a Stuart there. I actually physically pulled that. Um, <laughs> when you pull the cable, um, the brake is also physically pulled and then the Jeep brakes. Either it helps with the braking of the vehicle that's towing the Jeep or the Jeep brakes on its own if it breaks away. Now if you're wondering, and actually Stuart, I had no clue the hood of the Jeep could actually go back that far. I've never detested for. Really? No, I've never that's brought it back that far. the best part about a Jeep. Yeah, you just gotta make sure you pull this, you know, that's it. You know, huh. it. And that's why you know, it disconnects easy. Wow. What are these for? <laughs> I've had no That is clue. literally for the windshield to go really? down, and that's to strap it. How have I never known this? <laughs> so on the road, you'll see people do everything we're doing right now, and you'll see people have a dolly, which is like where you take the vehicle, you just ride it up on it. With someone safely guiding you, center the towed vehicle to the tow dolly. Slowly drive the towed vehicle forward until the tires touch the wheel stops at the front of the tow dolly platform. Like I am a huge fan of four down, typically more money than a dolly. So dolly you have, I don't know, I don't know exact prices, but a grand or two into the dolly. Especially if you get one used, you can find a deal. It takes pretty much no setup. You just start using it. Uh, this base plate's 500. Braking system was another 500. Auxiliary emergency brake system was about 100. The tow bar, which you've also got a Kurt tow bar. This is like, uh, I think it's like 900 bucks. And then on top of that, it hasn't come in yet. I've got, uh, I think it's like a Roadmaster electrical cable. It's like a seven pin to six pin. And that's what, when I hit the brakes in the front, it shows the brake lights in the back, or we turn the lights on, the blinkers, everything syncs up with the Jeep. So the Jeep light, everybody can see what's going on with the Jeep in the back. But my goodness, how much is that? That's like, that's like a million dollars. <laughs> no, it's uh, 500, I've lost the count of everything. 500, 600, 700. And then you get into the big stuff, another 500, 1200, and then the tow arms. But like you're looking at like two grand, 2200 for all the parts. And then, but the downside is, and the reason a lot of people again go with the tow dolly, because that's not too much different. The, down, the downside is you've still got to either install all that stuff yourself or pay someone to install that. And you're probably looking at, usually you just kind of double everything. Okay, Stuart's got a trick because our fenders are slightly faded here. <laughs> it's matching the gray. No, these are not gray fenders. These are black fenders. It's a trick here. We got blowtorch. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you gotta be careful once you get by the paint, but it's, uh, wow. Do it with full responsibility if you do this on your own and you <laughs> do it next to the gas tank and something happens. Oh, I don't want to get Definitely it. do it next to the gas tank. <laughs> Mono. He's no, he's joking. So, just to <laughs> we have, we have, we have to do that. <laughs> you have to say it really fast. <laughs> Don't use a rubber band or Is that pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could talk like that. <laughs> I just mumbled pretty much. Yeah. This is I, looking good. I like yeah. it. How long do you think this will last? What's our what's uh, our warranty? What's actually, our warranty on this? I did this on actually a Jeep I owned like 15 years ago, and I mean it actually lasted at least five years before I got rid of it, and they still yeah. look pretty good. I mean, I, I would go over them and hit them with like, you know, armor all or any UV stuff. Okay. So that might have helped keep them, but no, it's, it pretty much lasts. So. That's looking good. Oh my goodness. Who'd have thunk it? It's gonna look like a new Jeep, girl. That's the plan. <laughs> Are we even using this? Are you tricking me? <laughs> Cause I'm so sweet, super so neat, over easy Can't get enough, what's up that good stuff? Gotta soak it up, up, up Good this, good this Stuart has finished up everything inside here in the master bedroom, putting it all back together. And then best of all, the front of the RV, the deck area is repaired, it's ready to go it's actually um actually stronger <laughs> than what it was when we first got it and we are good to go anytime we're ready to go down the road okay so we are now on phase what phase are we on Stuart? i don't know we're pretty deep into this uh installing stuff on the gp jeep thing just, pretty deep amazon in. comes i work on something yeah so <laughs> Base plates in, we got the yeah, brake base. system, we got the emergency brake release in, and now we're in out of uh, OCD, um, the, the Jeep is detailed. Phase four, whatever phase we're on, is putting the electrical, uh, which we didn't have, and we had to wait for it to come in. So now Stuart's doing the electrical portion of this. Why would you want electrical? Basically, we want whatever is pulling this Jeep to be synced up with the Jeep. So if we're turning left, the left signal's on the Jeep, turning right, because, yeah. People need to see that. See these? We, you could have manually wired all this, but I think this kit was like fifty. It's bucks. it's one of those things that just which puts our total up to like whatever one million and well, fifty dollars now. To, to uh, be fair though, honestly, to make this kit yourself, oh good, it, it's going to probably cost the exact same amount of money. Be way more of a hassle. And the nice thing about it is it's all weather pack connectors that just plug in lines. Yeah. So plug this. Oh, plug wow. in. This crosses over to this side. So yeah, the wiring is going to come all the way from the back, all the way to the front. And we're gonna have a wiring harness somewhere around here. You know, so that everything is in sync as we go down the road, and we don't get rear-ended and all that good stuff. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Tow bar, we got the wire going to the brake, we've got the wire going to the safety portion of the brake, and then we've got the electric that communicates with the Jeep and shows what the Jeep's doing. She's just gonna plug in right here. So the Jeep is done. What do you think we're gonna be traveling in for season 25 with LJMJ. Let us know in the comments. A Jeep's gonna be behind a boat, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we would be lost at sea. You would never hear it's from us again. It's not gonna be behind a boat, I can tell you that. We love the water, we, we love do. a boat. I, I could I could like be a skipper, is that the word? A mate? What is it? Skipper mate. I'll be your skipper mate. On Team Journey, they always get a sneak peek, we preview. We have already uh, <laughs> shown them and gave them a glimpse of what is coming up. Check it out, teamjourney.com. We're excited to have the fifth wheel ready to roll, having that fixed. We're also excited about season 25. Uh, until next episode, we will catch you guys later.